Let's continue our introduction to PopNets by looking at how we can start to render out our simulations using Karma inside of Solaris. So as always, this project file will be available on Patreon. If you'd like to grab it, you can do so on there. There's also all of the previous project files are available on there as well. And I've added some just little notes inside of them as well. So if you wanted to grab those, then go ahead and jump on over there and grab them. But we have a simulation here. This is just from the intro animation. So you can see we just have some particles that are being spawned on an object here. And we're just applying some, you know, wind to these particles. Now I have a whole video on how we can use Karma and Solaris inside of Houdini. I have a whole video series on that. So if you wanna learn more about Solaris and rendering, then jump on over there. But I am going to cover just what we need to know to start rendering out our particles in, in this video. So for starters, we have to do one thing that uh, is going to tell the renderer how we want to actually render our particles or what the size of our particles want, we want them to be. And the way that we do that is using a p-scale attribute or in Solaris that uses USD and for USD, Houdini automatically converts p-scale to the width attribute. So we can just create the width attribute inside of our, our sop create here. So if we do an attribute wrangle, we can just Oops, I can pop this out and we can do F at width is equal to, and then we can set this to something super, super small, maybe like 0 0.01. And I can just accept that. And now our render is going to know what size our particles should be. So we need to do a couple of things here. First, we need to give these particles a material and then we need to put in some lights and a camera. So let's drop down a material library. I'm gonna dive inside here and I'm gonna do a Karma material builder. And I'm just going to just rename this to particles. And we can dive inside here and I'm going to select our standard surface here. Karma uses material X uh, in order to, to render. So we'll just make sure that we're using the Karma specific nodes. So let's jump this roughness up to a much higher value so we don't have a super shiny set of particles here. And then let's drop down a material linker. And we can drag our particles from this little area right here to this middle section. And we can take our SOP create and we can drag that into that first little option there. And that's going to assign that material to our particles. So now let's go ahead and just find a spot to place a light and let's control click on this area light. Let's maybe zoom this in a little bit and then let's unpin this so we can move around here again and let's just control click and put a camera in our scene as well. So now we need to drop down a karma node and this is going to place down two nodes. So we have our karma render settings here and with this we have two different render engines we can use. We have CPU and we have XPU. I would recommend just using CPU for your preview because when you're starting to use your IPR, you want it to have it, you know, be super responsive. And with the XPU render, anything with your scene that has to get loaded into your GPU as well because it's using your CPU and your GPU to render. And so that does take a little bit of time and that can kind of slow down your time to first pixel. So the CPU will get that a lot faster. Now we also can come over to this image output and we can select this filters and we can come and use a denoiser if we would like. So that can help to speed up that process as well. It's kind of up to you whether or not you want to use that. The other thing that I want to point out here is we come to this geometry and shading tab. We have this render points as option. And by default, it's set to spheres, but we can also change this to disks or oriented disks. Personally, I don't use these options, but if you want to you know, render them as disks or oriented disks, then you can do that. But personally, I think spheres just kind of look the best. I also want to point out render curves as, so we can use these as flat ribbons, rounded curves, or oriented ribbons. And I say that because uh, and later in, in this series, we're going to kind of take a look at how we can start to take our, 
our pop simulations and add some trails and stuff to them so that we can render them as curves. So I want to point out that you can also change that here in that setting as well. And again, with that, we're going to use the width attribute to determine the size of those curves as well as our spheres. So just keep that in mind as well. So all we have to do now in order to take a look at what our simulation is really looking like is come up to this perspective and set this to Karma CPU. That's going to just start rendering our scene here. And I can come into our light here and maybe I just dial this back just a little bit, maybe to something like seven. And we have uh, this little bit of a, our scene going on here. So these particles are, you know, they're not too big, but if I pin our viewport here, if I come back into our attribute wrangle, I can change the size of this. So if I wanted to make these really big, you can see that now that affects our, our view of our particles here. So I'm going to actually just set this down to something a little bit smaller, like 0 0.005. And you may be noticing that we have our, you know, gizmo here that's being uh, displayed in the center of our scene. So you don't want that because it gets in the way. And depending on what you have selected here in your scene graph as well, you may have this outline that's being applied to your viewport. And you also don't want that because uh, it kind of gets in the way. So just come back to your Karma render settings here and we can just select something else like this, this render scope here. And that's just going to get rid of that so we can really just focus on what our, our particles are looking like. Now we can rotate around and we can affect our scene here if we would like to. We can you know look for a better angle, maybe you know play around with shadows and stuff. We can move our lights and everything. But if we wanted to start to get some, some nicer looking particles as far as material goes, there's a couple different things that I like to do with particles. So we can use all of our attributes that we have on our geometry inside of our shader. So if you remember, we have an attribute called age. So let's dive into our material here and let's use that age attribute to actually colorize our particles. But actually before I do that, let's jump into our SOP create and let's select our wrangle there so we can see our attributes. And you can see that we have our age attribute right now on this specific frame is going from you know, zero to, or actually one, to a value of about seven here. So we want to just remember that uh, because that's gonna be important for when we want to actually color these particles. So let's drop down a geometry property value node. And this is the node that we need to use for Karma in order to bring in an attribute from our geometry. So in this case, like we talked about, I'm gonna put in the age attribute and it is a float attribute. It is important that you set this to be the correct type. So let's take that, that float attribute and let's pipe that into a remap because like we said, our values are currently going from one or if we wanted to start at the start of our simulation, they'd be going from zero to the end. They'd be at 10 because we've got 240 frames here and the frame rate of our scene here is 24 frames per second. So they could potentially go from zero to 10. So let's wire in our age attribute into the input of our remap and let's set the end low. We'll keep that at zero. But let's set the end high to a value of like 7.2 because that's pretty close to the top end of what we had um, at this current frame. So we're just working with this current frame right now, but you keep in mind that anything past this value is gonna be clamped to this output value uh, of one. So this is just remapping it from zero to 7.2 to zero to one. And the reason we want it to zero to one is because we want to have a, sorry, a karma ramp parameter node because this is going to take a value from zero to one. So that's going to be the position. So this black value is at a, a position of zero and the white value is at a position of one. So we're remapping our age to fit within this ramp value. And then we can wire this into our color. And if I just take this black color here and I set this to maybe something like blue, 
you can see at the start of our simulation or where the particles are just spawning, they're going to be given this blue value. And towards the end, they're going to be given this white value. We can change this around, maybe like green or something. And you can see, we get this kind of nice gradient that's being applied to this. Now, we also have a bunch of other options in here, just presets. So we have like this magma, which looks kind of cool. We also have this plasma or... I really like the, the twilight as well, but let's set this back to magma for now. And maybe let's even invert this so we get this kind of a look. And, you know, we have a, a nice little base here that we can start to, you know, render out our simulation or see, you know, play around with it and, and get a different look if we would like. Now, another thing that I want to show that we can use is another technique that I like to, to use from time to time, and that is going to be using the velocity to actually colorize our particles. So let's jump into our SOP Create here. And with our velocities, we can only, if we actually jump back to our material for just a second, if we look at our remap here, or our ramp, it takes in a float value. So if we wanted to use our velocities, our velocities are a float three or a, a vector three, right? So they have three different values that would be piping in here, which it would only use one of. So we'd have to do like a vector to a float in order to do that. And then we would only be able to measure the velocity of, you know, one axis of our, of our velocity or one, you know, um, one of the flow values of our velocity. So the way that we can get around that is by coming back into this attribute wrangle and we can take a, or create another attribute. So we'll call this F at, um, we'll call this magnitude because we're gonna take the magnet, we're gonna find the magnitude of our velocity vector. So the way that we do that is with the length function inside of X. So you can see here returns the magnitude of a vector. So if we give this a, you know, a vector three, then it's going to give us back a float. So we'll do V at V. And if I scroll over here and we find magnitude, now you can see we have a float value that is given to all of our particles that's called magnitude. And like I said, it's going to giving us the magnitude of this velocity vector. So we can jump back in here and we can come to our particles. Let's make a copy of this uh, geometry property value as well as the remap. Let's wire in the second one into the second remap here. And let's just call this that magnitude. And again, this is a float, so that is fine as is. And let's wire this into our remap. But again, we don't want this to be an input high of 7.2 because our input max would have been maybe like 0.7. And now you can see that we get, again, a nice interesting look to our particles. And, you know, we can play around with this as well. We could flip those, get some interesting looks with that. Maybe we set this to, you know, a different a different um, color color scheme here. That one's pretty cool. And you can see that we get just some different looks with this. And you can mess around with this if you wanted to as well. You can play around with all the colors. You could, you know, mix in, you know, your age uh, versus your your magnitude. You can do all sorts of things inside of the shader here to get some some really nice looks. But I wanted to show those two different ways that we can start to colorize our particles because more often than not, I'm using at least one of them to influence the shader in some direction. So really cool ways that we can get some really nice looks for our particles. But anyways, hopefully this has helped you out. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. Uh, I've got a Discord. It's in the a link is in the description. You can join that. I'll be more than happy to answer questions there. I've got a, a ton of people in there as well that are just hanging out and, you know, talking about Houdini and asking questions and answering questions for each other um, as well. So if you're interested in and becoming a part of that community, then definitely jump in there. And like I said, if you have questions, you can ask them in there as well, and I can get back to them um, as quick as I can, as well as other people as well, if you run into any sort of any sort of issues. So, anyways, hopefully this has helped you out. Thank you guys for watching, and have a good day.